By 1979, Iraq had started construction on its brand new nuclear reactor. Built with French assistance, Iraq was on its way to acquire nuclear weapons. Israel was shocked at this development because there was nothing that would stop Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein from launching nuclear missiles on Israel. If Saddam succeeds in destroying Israel and chasing the Jews out of the Middle East, he would become the greatest warrior in the Arab world. To make matters worse, Israel's biggest ally, the United States, had suddenly become a friend of Iraq as Iraq was fighting Iran, now America's biggest enemy. Israel would well love to do a surgical airstrike on the nuclear reactor, but Israel's main fighter jet, the F-4 Phantom, does not have the range for such a mission. In this video, we will see how Israel dealt with this deadly threat to its existence. Israel is a country right in the middle of the Arab world. All its neighbors are enemies. So Israel, which was created by the Western powers, is always in fight for its survival. Even if one of its neighbors acquires nuclear weapons, the game is up. The Jews will have to pack up and run again. In 1976, after repeated attempts, Iraq managed to convince France to sell the Osiris-class nuclear research reactor. The deal also involved the sale of 72 kilograms of 93% enriched uranium and training of its personnel. The deal was worth 1.6 billion US dollars by 2022 price and irresistible for the French government. The 40 megawatt light water nuclear reactor will be constructed at Al Tuaita Nuclear Center near Baghdad. The name of the main reactor was called Osira and construction began in 1979. The construction of the nuclear reactor shocked Israel, so Mossad, Israel's secret agency, began its work to stop Iraq from completing the construction. On 6 April 1979, Israeli agents planted bombs on the Osirak reactor awaiting shipment to Iraq at a port in southern France. On 14 June 1980, Mossad agents assassinated Yahya al-Mashad, the Egyptian nuclear scientist who headed the Iraqi nuclear program in a hotel in Paris. Mossad then continued to assassinate more scientists involved in the program and this caused panic among the French scientists who started resigning. But Saddam Hussein intervened and awarded the French scientists huge cash bonuses, luxury cars, free foreign travel, protection and tips to avoid Mossad agents. This boosted the morale of the scientists and the project went as planned. After failing to convince the French government from selling the nuclear reactor to Iraq, Israel's new Prime Minister Menachem Begin authorized the Israeli Air Force to practice bombing a mock-up of the Iraqi nuclear reactor. But Begin faced opposition from his colleagues, who reasoned that bombing the Iraqi nuclear reactor would prove too costly politically. The Egyptian-Israeli peace deal may break off, and Israel-France relations will also be damaged. On 22 September 1980, Saddam Hussein invaded Iran, and now Iran also saw the nuclear reactor as a threat. On 30 September 1980, eight days into the Iran-Iraq war, Iran launched Operation Squad Soul. It was a mission to bomb Iraq's new Osirak nuclear reactor, located at Al Tuaita Nuclear Center near Baghdad. Four Iranian F-4 Phantoms, each loaded with six Mk-82 GB bombs, took off from Nojek Air Base. The Phantoms flew low to avoid radar detection and were refueled at the Iraqi border. On approaching the target, the jets climbed steeply and came down pounding the reactor with 12 Mk-82 bombs. The Iraqis were caught completely by surprise and did not fire a single bullet. The bombing destroyed the research laboratories, the reactor control buildings, and training facilities, but the main reactor itself was avoided as the Iranians feared a radioactive fallout would have a catastrophic consequence on the entire Middle East region. The Israelis cheered on the Iranian Air Force attack, but they soon found that the attack did not stop the Iraqi nuclear program. In a few months, the work on the reactor resumed a full phase. By October 1980, Mossad's director, Mr. Hofi, told Israeli Prime Minister that Mossad's campaign of assassination and sabotage could not stop the Iraqi nuclear program and the only way to put an end to it was an airstrike. Prime Minister Begin had no second thoughts. He gave the green light for the Israeli Air Force to attack the Iraqi nuclear reactor. The Air Force launched Operation Opera. Operation Opera was by all means very challenging. The Iraqi nuclear reactor was located 1600 kilometers from Israel. First of all, Israel had no planes suitable for the mission. The F-4 fighter jets which Israel possessed did not have the range to attack Iraq and return. But Israel was lucky. The newly made F-16 Fighting Falcon jets, originally ordered by the Shah of Iran, 
was on hold due to the Iranian Revolution of 1979. So these jets were south sold to Israel and it arrived on time. The F-16 had twice the range of F-4 Phantoms, but the Americans who sold these jets had no idea how Israel was going to use them. An enemy's enemy is a friend. Israel also found a new friend, Iran. Iranian secret agents provided detailed photographs of the Osirak nuclear reactor. These photographs were taken by the Iranian F-4 reconnaissance aircrafts. Iran viewed Iraqi nuclear reactor project as a threat to its existence. But how can the Israeli jets proceed to Iraq's nuclear reactor without being detected by three countries' radar like Jordan, Saudi Arabia and of course Iraq itself? From an earlier raid, Israel found a blind spot in the Iraqi radar on the border with Saudi Arabia. The Iraqis knew about this blind spot but they did not take action because they did not expect war with Saudi Arabia. The Iraqi Air Force was a threat to Israel but Iraq was deeply focused on the Iran-Iraq war. All their radars and Air Force planes were focused on attacking Iran. On 4th April 1981, 8 Iranian F-4 jets made a big attack on Iraq's H-3 airbase. 27 Iraqi jets, including two Tu-22 blinders and three Tu-16 Badger strategic bombers were knocked out. This attack gave Iran a complete air superiority. Israeli intelligence also observed that the Iraqi Air Force was in a severely depleted state. On 7 June 1981, 1555 local time, eight F-16s, each with two unguided Mark 84 2,000 pound bombs, took off from Etzion Air Base. King Hussein of Jordan, vacationing in the Gulf of Aqba, identified the Israeli jets and quickly sent a message to Iraq warning them of the attack. But the message never reached the Iraqi high command. When the Israeli jets reached Saudi airspace, they pretended to be Jordanians, using Jordanian radio signals and formations, confusing Saudi radar operators. The external fuel tanks were jettisoned over the Saudi desert. Upon reaching the Iraqi airspace, the attack plane flew low to avoid radar detection. When the Israeli jets arrived near the Osirak complex, it was mealtime and the soldiers manning the anti-aircraft defenses switched off their radar and went for a meal. The Israeli jets, in formation of two, climbed to 2100 meters and dived down. 16 bombs were dropped and at least 8 hit the reactor. The attack lasted just 2 minutes. Soon, the Israeli jets leaving the area came under heavy anti-aircraft fire, but they escaped unhurt. The operation was a resounding success. The reactor was flattened. Ten Iraqi soldiers and one French civilian was killed in the attack. Israel later paid France compensation for the French signed as killed. The attack was a big shock to the United States, which thought Israel was misusing its high-tech weapon supply, but continued its support. Other Arab countries viewed Israel as a new bully in the region with the freedom to do whatever it wishes. If you like this video, please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.